Hello everybody, and just here, and welcome back to Hataraku Mao Sama Season 2, Episode 2. Uh, right from the get go, my phone is overheating because it's incredibly hot outside, so the camera might be getting choppy at times. I'm not sure, maybe, maybe not. Hopefully, it's uh, nothing major. And uh, the other thing is, uh, I must admit, I might have been a little bit too harsh on Episode 1 especially when it comes to the art department. Uh, I learned that um, the art style in Season 2 is much closer to the original, is much closer to the art in the light novels. So it's not necessarily a uh, downgrade in terms of art, it's not necessarily a change for the worse, it's a change for more accurate. Um, as much as season one was, uh, or rather, season one was uh, taking its art style from the manga, and season two is apparently taking it from the light novels. That's the difference. It's not a downgrade, it's just a side grade. They took something different as a, um, as a source for the art style they're gonna be using. So, I stand corrected. I stand corrected. And uh, yeah, besides that, something's interesting gonna be happening, I'm assuming, with uh, Alas Ramus having appeared. A uh, much needed, I guess, a much needed shake up in, um, in their little world, in their little lives, because sure, the visits from demon generals and the betrayal by the church and whatnot are interesting topics for sure and uh, i have no doubt that we're gonna deal with some of them in this season but um, alas ramus is the added twist so that's gonna be curious that's gonna be interesting and uh, that's pretty much all that happened in the previous episode uh, everything else besides uh, alas ramus appearance was just purely comedic it purely served to reintroduce the characters and there wasn't really any more substance besides that so i'm hoping in this episode we will start seeing some actual substance some actual plot something actually going on that goes beyond uh, haha cockroach latin name because cockroach grows ill right uh, i i hope we're gonna go uh, for something more I don't know what. I can't even begin to think what are they gonna do with Alas Ramus. Uh, as I said, I read a little bit of the manga, but it was long ago, and I don't really remember much. I remember that Alas Ramus was a character, and I remember there was a beach episode, and that's essentially all. So, uh, what else are we gonna witness? Maybe they're gonna go for some anime original things? Who knows? Uh, I heard voices that people would like an anime original ending, that people would like uh, the anime to take a little bit of a different turn. I don't know, maybe that's gonna happen, maybe that's not gonna happen. Uh, from what I hear, all the... most of the... Um, uh, most of the drama about the ending is about Mao picking the waifu that wasn't the people's waifu. I don't know who, but that's essentially the summary of the drama as far as I'm concerned, and uh, so I say that's fucking stupid. <laughs> Whoever Mao ends up with, I'd be fine with it, uh, preferably Chiho. I really like Chiho, Chiyo, whatever her name is. Uh, Emilia? I guess, although, nah, not really. Emilia isn't a great match for Mao, I don't think. Yeah, okay, uh, I don't really have anything more to say, so let's just start watching it. And the heat is re really getting to me, if you can tell. I'm having brain farts every now and then. Uh, okay, subs, reset the clock, sound. And uh, support. You can support the channel in a plethora of ways. You can do that on Patreon, link in the description on Throne, also link in the description 
or by sharing my videos with other people because the word of mouth really matters a lot for the growth of a channel. And with all that, we can finally start watching episode 2 of season 2 of Hataraku Maosama version by subs please and we can start watching it in three two one go okay we're starting where we left off papa is satan absolutely <laughs> They really can, people can really take it out of context. They can really make some cool memes out of it. <laughs> True. Yeah, very much so. Hungry? <laughs> How can you say no to this face? There ain't much milk in those boobs, but hey, they can always buy formula. <laughs> Uh, his face in this one shot still bothers me, though. That's as much as I'm gonna say about the art style. Sure, the rest might be closer to the uh, to the light novels, but that one shot, it's not great. Light novel style or not, it's just not great. Plain and simple. Interesting to see Yusa in some casual clothes. Although that's one thing uh, this anime and this series in general is quite nice about, that the characters here actually wear varied clothes. And I know that is a pretty low bar, and it's not something that really should be praised, but... But, uh, yeah, all things considered, usually in anime, everybody has, like, a single set of clothes. And that's it. Sure. Okay, yeah. Berity. Ah, eh, probably not. Wing branch, winged branch. One of Mao's subordinates. Oh. Yeah. Time to get some child support from Yusa. Would she be willing to stay with uh, someone else than uh, her parent, though? I 
Okay, we finally get to see Chiho train uh, archery. Uh, what's it called? Japanese archery. It, it, it has a name. A name I can't rem remember right now. But it does have a name. Caring for his baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a weird situation, all right. Buying formula, I'm assuming. Diapers. Yeah, there ain't no sleep with a child at home. Okay, well, that's good. She really thought of everything, didn't she? The Royal Concert! <laughs> oh! I thought she paid for it out of her own pocket. Yeah, a preparation for her own baby. Whomst? Oh. Not you, though. <laughs> and now nobody's at home, neither Papa nor Mama. Are they gonna have to live with each other? Is Emmy gonna have to... Move to Mao's place or the other way around. You can say that. <laughs> Kinda is, but it's not. Yeah, the situation is complicated. Okay, so Alas can be comforted. Yep. Chisama. Yeah, that's way too complicated. I guess Chinachan also works. Susanne, in short, it works. <laughs> and he's just serving as a portable Tsukomi, isn't he?
Yeah, it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> She's on the mama duty. Okay, amusement park, interesting, an amusement park date. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was a good idea, but... Her screaming papa. <laughs> no, they don't. Yes, she did. <laughs> Very trusting for a kid, isn't she? Yeah. Long ago, but not because of that. <laughs> okay, Sariel is completely broken. But be mindful of appearances. That's the Japanese way. <laughs> yeah. True. She would love nothing more than that, I assure you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the immediate change in her eyes, though. Right, right, right. There was the uh, question and there wasn't an answer. That's true, that's right. Near the end of the last season. I completely forgot that uh, Chiho did actually confess to Mao. And those are tears of joy. Yeah. It's not just sadness that causes tears. It's all sorts of emotions.
Oh. Okay, so they're gonna meet at the amusement park by a complete coincidence. Six tickets means everybody can go. Yeah, they're going on an ooting. I need to finish watching Spike's Family. Just remembered, just realized, I haven't seen the finale. You have six tickets. Everybody can go. That's one way to look at it. Sure. You literally have six tickets. Enough for everybody. Including Christia Bell. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you, you really don't let it get to you, for sure. Yeah, it's absolutely not like that. And I just noticed she looks like one's uh, Tatsumaki from behind. Yes, yeah, Ariel is, for all intents and purposes, a fallen angel right now. Apple demon? Bonsai demon? I love this little bit of a shadow of a definition on her thigh. Right, that's why. Yeah. Okay, so she really is... Well, uh, she behaves well. Yeah, you do have extra tickets. Yeah. Hataraku, title drop. Oh, okay, a kid's uh, seat. And Urushihara learned to bring his uh, dishes. That's another benefit of... Oh! Here's the actual mother, it would seem. And... She was activated. I've no clue what's the deal with the glowing moon. <laughs> Of course she's gonna be here.
Yeah. Of course. She doesn't want to fight, Ashia. Oh, and she's here as well. Of course she's here. <laughs> Yeah. Tail them, of course. Okay, that's a big change in scenery. Tree of Life. And this dude is an angel, I'm assuming. He said Sephiroth, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, at least Urushihara is useful for something. He can sense gates opening, apparently. I'm assuming next episode, uh, the people from beyond the gate are gonna cause some issues. Tree of Life. Alasramus was created from some bonsai. Could it be? The key to restoring key, the Tree of Life is somehow Alasramus. Maybe, just a thought. But uh, worth noting down, why not? Key to restore ring tree of life is Alas. I'm not gonna be using her full name, it's way too long and complex. Kinda odd that everybody keeps using her full name too, not gonna lie. Everybody calling her Alas, R Alas Ramus constantly really feels unnatural, doesn't it? You'd think they'd go for like Alas Chan or Ramus Chan or something along those lines. But no, everybody just uses full Alas Ramus. Kinda odd, but whatever. Uh, okay, how about now? We go through this episode again, shall we? Screaming, crying, of course, as kids are wont to do. She got the sacred sword barehanded, that's true, which means that perhaps she's not of the demon folk. Maybe half, an, half angel, full angel, a Demigod of some sort, a godling, I don't know. Certainly a supernatural being. Yeah, how can you say no to this face? Tiny little eyebrows, droopy little eyes, snot on her face. <laughs> really exaggerated bunch of snot. Who's the bird dude? Another one of Demon of Mouse generals? Maybe. Uh, the dude on the left that we've seen at the end of this episode seems like he's an angel, so we know his identity. And there is this woman who is in the background and does stuff. I don't know what her deal is, but something is her deal, for sure. Uh, because not only did she create Alas, but also followed her, which is interesting. Yeah, if it weren't for the apple, I'd say she was a normal baby. 
sure, I guess her her color is normal for anime standards, not gonna lie. Maybe she imprinted, I don't know. How did she know that uh, Mao was Mao? That he's Satan. Did someone call him Satan by then? I don't know, and I honestly don't care much to go back to episode 1 to see that. <laughs> but she probably had it imprinted right from the get-go that her mother is Amy Yusa, uh, Emilia, the hero, and uh, her father is Sadao Mao, Mao Sadao, uh, the, uh, the, the Demon King Satan. He is acknowledging paternity, at least substitute paternity. There doesn't seem to be any any parents of hers, so someone has to take care of her. Alice means wing and Ramus means branch. Branch makes sense. She was created out of a tree. Wing? I don't know. A connection to the uh, angels? Is she like half... Demon half angel kind of deal, maybe. It comes from Ente Isla, so that at least gives us some lead. And yeah, the only place that can really care care for her is Mo's place. I guess they could give her to Crestia, but she'd probably cry after her uh, papa and mama. I like how we're finally showing uh, Chihos. Uh, I gotta look it up because it's gonna it's gonna bother me. It's gonna bother me. Japanese archery. Kudo, kudo. Yeah, I was correct. Kudo. And apparently Chiho trains kudo. I mean, we we knew that from. Season 1, because she was shown training Kudo in the opening of Season 1, if I'm not mistaken, or the ending. But now we finally see her at the dojo. You can see me as an equal. Yeah, kinda, sorta. Let's go to McRonald's. Probably not the greatest choice of a place to discuss Chihos, uh, Chihos, cheese, <laughs> to discuss uh, cheese relationship with Mao. Of course, kids cry, especially kids that were separated from her parent, parents, actually. Ate udon. That's interesting that she can just a eat solid foods. Uh, it's usually fairly hard to like age anime children because they look they can look older they can look younger so i wasn't sure if she can actually eat solid foods or does she need formula but apparently she's old enough to eat solid foods so that would make her like what three years old Maybe something around that. I know absolutely nothing about raising babies. I don't know at what age they can eat solid food, but I'm assuming she can't be any younger than, like, two? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. She started talking, though. At least somewhat. I guess she might be around four... I don't know. As I said, I know absolutely nothing about raising babies. Different brands of diapers, antibacterial wipes, toothbrushes, CP cup, barley tea. What's so special about barley tea? I don't know. Once King Satan gains power in Japan and forms his new devil's army, I'd like to see you in its highest position. Yeah, she wouldn't she probably wouldn't be the best general, I have a feeling, but she might do well as a minister of King Satan's new country, probably. And yeah, of course, Chiho looks at it as Kind of a, oh, it, it's as if it was Mao's and my baby. Of course, of course. 
And yeah, things really had gone bad if Ashia spends money on uh, bentos, on pre-made bentos and energy drinks. Shit's really gone down. <laughs> There's a little kid involved, yeah. I mean, she's correct, but... Uh, I wanted to... Yes, this. That's a badly cut out photo of a mouse. Do... Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Right? Can I snap it real quick? There we go. Annotate. And how about I do window capture? Sure X. Sure X. Oh, come on. Right? Th that's a photo of a mouse. And with a lot of... Um, what am I call it? Uh, tessellation? No, not tessellation. Jagged edges here, so it uh, it wasn't cut out in uh, in the best way. Yeah, you can certainly see some like budget cuts in this series for sure. So despite my qualms about the art style being void and null because they're following the light novel art style, there are still some moments that give me a little bit of a pause. Kinda is, but kinda not. Chiho is gonna be a crucial element to this household. I have a feeling. <laughs> And uh, kind of odd that Alas uses the full form of uh, Suzune-chan and Chine-chan instead of Suzune and Chine. You'd think that dropping the Chan would be easier for a kid to spell out, but whatever. I'm not gonna really think about it more than it, more than needs to be thought. Hmm. And yes, she is raring to go. She is very much Sundarish towards the whole thing. And what a coincidence, everybody gets the tickets. Everybody's jealous, of course. Of course they are. Uh, I really like uh, Mao's uh, manager. She's genuinely a great character. Very mature and very reasonable. Right, she's not she's not giving them trouble for coming into work with uh, Alas or anything. She just explains calmly in simple terms that hey, what will people think? Right? Sure, you might be going at it from a position of wanting to do good, but people don't necessarily know that. And people have the tendency to assume the worst. So, uh Maybe think about how it looks when Chio constantly visits your house and uh, now carries around your kid, right? It's not a great look. I like it. I really like how mature and reasonable she is. Yeah, and even has some praise that, hey, you didn't snap back with what does society know about us? That already makes you mature, and she is correct. Mao is very mature behind the whole uh, facade that we see right now with a McDonald's worker and a haha -ha funny comedy. He is a being that lived for millennia, fought wars, and r ran a country, right? So, of course, he'd be mature. Of course, he'd be the first one to say, I don't know about enough about society conf to confidently dismiss it. You might be correct. I don't know enough to say that you're wrong, so I'm going to assume you're correct. Prioritize time spent with your kid over some immediate income. Ah, uh, yeah. Huh. Problem is, it's not really a uh, that simple. 
Because if he prioritizes his kid completely and stops bringing income, then uh, problems begin. You can't exactly say that you should prioritize your kids, you should prioritize yourself, you should prioritize whatever over income. Income is, as much as you can love it or hate that fact, income is what keeps us alive. If you don't have income, you don't have a place to live, you don't have food to eat, you don't have nothing. So, uh, sure, sometimes uh, ending his shift early might be fine, but it's not something that can happen constantly. Can I keep taking advantage of your trust for a while longer? Uh, hmm. Of course, she is very much stoked for it. She'd love nothing more than just straight go live with Mao if she had the ability to, but alas, she's too young for that. So, of course, she'd be down. Uh, I'm getting a little bit of a mixed feelings, mixed feelings here. I see where Mao is coming from, and I see that she very much wants to do that. But it still does feel a little bit like Mao taking advantage of her. J just, just a little bit, right? I know that Mao genuinely has nobody else to turn to. And I know that Chiho is entirely willing. But there is that little bit of an iffy feeling to, to this whole thing, right? There is. I don't mind it. Ultimately, I don't mind it, but it bears mention. I'll wait until you can, no matter what the answer ends up being. That also creates a little bit of that feeling, right? As if Mao is kind of leading her by her nose. Like, I'm... Uh, uh, what's it called? Hanlon's razor, right? You You shouldn't attribute things to malice rather to incompetence first. In this case, it's not incompetence. Mao is actually genuine and Chiho is genuine, but it does feel like he is taking advantage of the fact that she's in love with him and she's ready to do anything for him and he's not even willing to give her an answer. A little bit of an iffy feeling here, but whatever, whatever. I'm not gonna dwell on it. You understand what I told you, right? Yeah, sure they do. Will they follow your advice? Probably not. Who's gonna come? You literally have six tickets. Why the picking and choosing? And of course, Emmy doesn't do anything on like half effort. She goes there as Alas Ramus Mama, so she has to look presentable. Of course. I love how much Emerada just started taking advantage of modern world and she's just eating Pocky. Sitting in her alchemical lab, but eating Pocky. I love those little bits of uh, reverse isekai. Always, always do. That's one of the reasons why I loved Gate so much. Seeing the scene of a party at a royal palace and kids in the background are playing football with a modern football and it's just mind-blowing and amazing and I love it. That's why I love Gate. You can think whatever you want about Gate. Uh, I know some people see it as just pure Japanese propaganda and it probably is, let's be honest, but it has its own merit. It absolutely does, and uh, it really is an amazing series as an isekai and a reverse isekai connected. Both, because it's really both. I love this definition on her thigh. You usually don't see it in art, the definition between those two biggest muscles of a thigh, and the wrist. That little, little bit of a gap, little bit of a crease between those muscles. You rarely see it defined this well. 
I really like the this attention to detail. I really do. I look into her. I wonder what she's gonna find, if anything. She brings me her dishes in a clear move to clean up after herself. Thanks you. She says thank you. And yes, Urushihara is worse than the toddler, indeed. Hmm. A bike seat. People actually taking care of her are useless and she. Yes, because those are the only people who have a lot of free time. But one, th one good thing that already came out of Alas Ramos being here is Urushihara behaving. So, hey, it's already a net positive. I don't have proof that anything's wrong, and of course she's not my kid. Yeah, but I'm kind of concerned. And you are very correctly concerned, because there is this, this woman stalking you around, using some weird, weird ring to light up the moon glyph on Alice's forehead. I have no clue what the deal with that is, but that's what happens. Uh, initially, I thought that maybe uh, she, this woman on the left, sent Alas as a means of something. Maybe she couldn't locate Mao, so she created Alas and sent her off into the lands between as an apple with an inscription, find your father, and father being inscribed on her. Uh, Mao, and she wanted to locate Mao through those means. Uh, I thought that maybe she sent Alas as her envoy, or maybe she herself sent herself as Alas because maybe transporting a toddler through the hyperspace costs less mana than transporting a fully grown human or something, but no, she's here, so she clearly could make it, she clearly could find Mao. What's her goal? What's her purpose? Who the fuck is she? I don't know. I don't know. It's intriguing. Uh, also, one thing I noticed. Crowd shots. Sure, they're mostly stills, but there is no CG in the crowd shots. Not something you see commonly. And of course, everybody they decided to tail Mao, because, because of course. Because Ashia is worried about Mao, because Chiho is worried about Mao and Ramus and uh, her, because she just wants to stir shit up. <laughs> She's not worried about Emmy. She just wants to see some juicy things happening, and she just wants to pester Emmy about anything that's gonna happen, and she's just... She's just a sly little girl, isn't she? <laughs> yeah, she shocked me because she she already noticed that, oh, Emmy is dressed up nicely, so it must be the day, so I'm gonna follow her, and already judging, already the judgmental eye, Trying too hard can backfire. Mao wins because he came natural. And Emmy is trying too hard. <laughs> what will you two do? Probably tail them. This is a very cool landscape. I love it. Very otherworldly. Very unique. Very alien planet. I love it. I really do. And here's this dude with some half-naked Roman legionnaires restoring Tree of Life to its proper form. And I'm assuming Alas Ramos, since she was born of a, uh, of a tree, is somehow the key to restoring it. Half teriyaki chicken, half melty mozzarella. I could go for some KFC right now. <laughs> A gate opened somewhere and shit's gonna hit the fan. Because of course it's gonna. Okay, my assumption. Shit's gonna hit the fan, then beach episode, then shit hits the fan even harder, then we end 
this season on something. I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna adapt the rest of the light novel this season or not. I don't honestly know how much more of the light novel is left. If you know, maybe do let me know. If Can they possibly squeeze the rest of the light novel in a single season? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. And that was episode 2 of Hatarakumawa Sama Season 2. Uh, this one was much better than the first one. Uh, not only because I uh, stopped looking at the art through the prism of... Uh, through the lens of it being a downgrade, but rather I started looking at it as a side grade, as staying more true to the source material. Uh, but also because there was genuinely more substance in this episode. Uh, more things happened that mattered. The first episode was pretty much entirely based around the cockroach and uh, the feeling of like foreboding, oh, what's looking at them, what's looking at them, and then just a complete drop oh, of, oh, it was a cockroach. Episode 1 was mostly just senseless comedy and uh, reintroduction reintroduction of characters this episode has some stuff has some substance and uh, i can see that being the case from now on i can see future episodes also having the substance that i so much desire uh what else that needs to be said about this episode um uh, not much really Except uh, I really like where everybody's relationships are going. I like how Amy is uh, mellowing out, because it's clearly visible. I like how uh, Maos and Chios, Chios, Chis <laughs> relationship is uh, progressing. Yeah, I I like it. I really did enjoy this episode. Uh, I think in like Epis in the season one, there were some hints at something going on between Ashia and uh, Emmy's friend, the smug one with the cut lips. Uh, I wonder if they're gonna go for something in that direction or not. Would be curious. Would be interesting. Would be interesting if there was one couple in this. Uh, well, I wanted to say one couple that's normal <laughs> in this uh, in this uh, series, but you can hardly call a couple of a human and a former demon lord, demon general of a demon lord Satan, a normal couple. So that goes completely out of the way. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, I really like where it's going. I really like the brand new added mystery of not just Alas Ramus, but also the Tree of Life and the mysterious woman who's tailing Alas and the uh, weird glowing uh, crescent moon on Alas's forehead. And I like how they keep, maybe not drip feeding uh, those mystery, but they are giving us pieces of the puzzle. Slowly but surely. And right now we're getting completely unrelated pieces of the puzzle, but we're getting them. And as this series progresses, as the, as the season progresses, we're going to keep getting more pieces and we're going to be able to slowly start assembling the whole picture. I like it. Really do enjoy this approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's just going to be it. Uh, this episode's going to be under an hour, but hey, sometimes you, sometimes uh, a shorter episode is needed. <laughs> shorter episode, an hour of an episode from 23-minute video. Jesus, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> Wouldn't do it any other way. Uh, you guys, you let me know in the comments, what did you think of this episode? My reaction, my theories, no spoilers. Please, I beg of you, if you must talk spoilers, if you have the internal deep need to, to talk spoilers, uh, go to my Discord, link in the description, link also here. Join it, there is a Hatarakumao-sama channel, you can use spoiler tags and talk about spoilers in there. Uh, 
uh, like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, but tell me why so I can improve. Subscribe to the channel to be notified of future releases of not only Hatrakuma Osama, but also Ruby Ice Kingdom, also Yofuka Shino Uta, Call of the Night, amazing series, highly recommend. Also Simfugir GX, and also Overlord Season 4, and also a non-seasonal show. I don't know which one yet, because the poll hasn't closed yet, and uh, people on my Discord, on my Discord, on my Patreon, get to vote for which show I'm gonna watch next, so I myself don't know that yet. Uh, there's a video describing the poll, so go to that video if you wanna see what are the contenders, uh, or just join my Patreon and vote. And speaking of Patreon, you can support the channel right there on Patreon, link in the description. For 10 bucks, you get early access to non seasonal shows like Simple Gear GX, like whatever will be uh, the result of the poll. And for five bucks, you get to vote in said poll. And for just a dollar, you get a uh, place in the credits and you get a role on the Discord server. Uh, there's also Throne if you want to pitch into some new gear for me. And uh, if you just don't want to spend money, you can just share my videos. It really helps a lot. Uh, word of mouth really matters for the growth of a channel, so I'm forever grateful for every single link to my content that you shared. Is that all? That's all. Yeah, so uh, that's gonna be it for me for today. So as always, you guys do all the good stuff, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Cheers! And here's the promised list of patrons, here's the promised credits, and you can join those people.